Can THHN wire be used for underground installations? What protections are necessary for such setups? Additionally, what are the acceptable methods for transitioning from underground installations to aboveground equipment when a conductor emerges from grade? Hello everyone! In our last video, we covered the minimum cover requirements for burying underground wiring. Today, we'll dig deeper into section 300.5. In this discussion, we'll explore the types of wiring permitted by the code and the protective measures necessary to ensure the safety and integrity of underground installations. Without further ado, let's start digging these underground installation protection rules. Section 300.5b specifies that the interiors of enclosures or raceways installed underground are classified as wet locations. Consequently, all insulated conductors and cables placed within these enclosures or raceways for underground installations must comply with the requirements of Section 310.10c. This section mandates that all electrical cables and conductors used in underground installations, even those housed within raceways or other enclosures, must be listed for wet locations. Since the interior of every underground raceway and enclosure is considered a wet location, all conductors must meet the following criteria outlined in Section 310.10c. 1. Moisture impervious. Conductors must be metal sheathed and resistant to moisture. 2. Approved types. Conductors must be one of the following types. MTW, RHW, RHW2, TW, THW, THW2, THHW, THWN, THWN2, XHWN, XHWW2, or ZW. 3. Wet Location Listing. Conductors must be specifically listed for use in wet locations. Section 300.5c Underground cable and conductors installed under a building shall be in a raceway. Since Table 300.5a cover under the building is zero, the code requires all underground cables and conductors installed under a building to be housed in a raceway. This requirement is in place to provide additional protection against potential physical damage, moisture, and other hazards that could compromise the integrity of the wiring. Section 300.5c Exceptions Exception number 1. Type MI cable. Type MI cable can be installed within a building without a raceway if embedded in concrete, fill, or other masonry, as outlined in section 332.106. It is also permitted for underground installations, provided it is adequately protected against physical damage and corrosive conditions, following section 332.10.10. This flexibility makes type MI cable suitable for applications where raceways are impractical. Exception number 2. Type MC cable. Type MC cable, specifically designed for direct burial or concrete encasement, is also allowed under a building without being placed in a raceway, in compliance with section 330.10, A5. MI cable is ideal for environments requiring maximum moisture and physical damage resistance, allowing for direct burial under the guidelines of Section 300.5. On the other hand, MC cable offers a cost-effective alternative, permitted for use under buildings without raceways, provided it meets NEC regulations for direct burial. Section 300.5, D, Protection from Damage. Direct buried conductors and cables shall be protected from damage in accordance with 300.5, D1, through, D4. Section 300.5 D1. Emerging from grade. Direct buried conductors and cables emerging from grade and specified in columns 1 and 4 of table 300.5 shall be protected by enclosures or raceways extending from the minimum cover distance below grade required by 300.5 A to a point at least 2.5 meters, 8 feet, above finished grade. In no case shall the protection be required to exceed 450 millimeters, 18 inches, below the finished grade. Consider a direct buried cable installed under a concrete slab that is 102 mm 4 inches, thick. According to Table 300.5a, the minimum cover requirement is 450 mm. If the equipment to which this cable will connect is 3.0 m, 10 feet, high, Section 300.5, D1, states that the protection below the finished grade should not exceed 450 mm, 18 inches. Therefore, the protection could be set at 300 mm 12 inches. For the above grade protection, since the equipment height is 2.5 meters, 8 feet, the protection can extend all the way to the equipment. If the equipment height is less than 2.5 meters, 8 feet, 
The protection will, of course, extend all the way to the equipment. Section 300.5, D2, addresses the requirements for protecting conductors as they enter a building. The conductors that are entering a building must be adequately protected from potential damage up to the point where they enter. This ensures that the conductors are safeguarded against physical impacts, moisture, and other environmental factors that could compromise their integrity. The point of entrance refers to the location where the conductors transition from an outdoor environment into the building's structure. This could be through walls, floors, or other structural elements. Common methods of protection may include the use of conduits, raceways, or other enclosures that can shield the conductors from physical damage. To ensure the entry point is properly sealed to prevent moisture ingress. Use grommets or sealing compounds to create a watertight barrier where the conductors enter the building. Section 300.5, D, 3, Service Conductors. Underground service conductors that are not encased in concrete and that are buried 450 mm, 18 inches, or more below grade shall have their location identified by a warning ribbon that is placed in the trench at least 300 mm, 12 inches, above the underground installation. Section 300.5, D, 3, ensures safety and prevents accidental damage during future excavation or construction activities. These underground service conductors must be clearly marked. A warning ribbon serves as a visual indicator of the buried conductors. This ribbon should be made of durable, non-degradable material that can withstand soil conditions and remain visible over time. The ribbon should be placed in the trench at least 300 mm above the installed conductors. This height ensures that the warning is noticeable when the trench is backfilled, alerting anyone digging in the area to the presence of the buried conductors. Section 300.5, D, 4, Enclosure or Raceway Damage. If the enclosure or raceway is at risk of physical damage, the conductors must be installed in electrical metallic tubing, rigid metal conduit, intermediate metal conduit, RTRCXW, Schedule 80 PVC conduit, or an equivalent protective method. If the environment where the conductors are installed poses a risk of physical damage, such as areas with frequent traffic, heavy machinery, or potential impacts, extra protection is warranted. Section 300.5, D, 4 listed the acceptable protective methods for protecting the conductors, electrical metallic tubing, rigid metal conduit, intermediate metal conduit, RTRCXW, Schedule 80 PVC conduit, or an equivalent protective method. Section 300.5, E, Splices and Taps. Direct buried conductors or cables may be spliced or tapped without the need for splice boxes. These splices or taps must be performed in accordance with 110.14, B. Section 110.14, B outlines the correct methods for making electrical connections, emphasizing the following points. Connections must utilize suitable materials and techniques. Conductors should be of compatible sizes and types to prevent overheating or failure. Splices and taps need to be securely made and properly insulated to protect against moisture and contaminants. The accompanying photo illustrates an approved splicing kit, specifically the 3M90NA2 Scotchcast resin cable joints. These kits are designed for straight joints, splicing, or connecting multi-core non-shielded polymeric cables with XLPE insulation and core conductors ranging from 16 square m to 25 square m. Backfill. Backfill materials that include large rocks, paving materials, cinders, sharp or angular substances, or corrosive materials must not be placed in an excavation where they could damage raceways, cables, conductors, or other substructures. These materials can also prevent proper compaction of the fill or contribute to corrosion of the raceways and cables. To prevent physical damage to the raceway, cable, or conductor, protection should be provided using granular or selected materials, suitable running boards, appropriate sleeves, or other approved method. For example, consider a project where direct burial cable. If the backfill includes large stones or sharp materials, these could easily puncture the cable, leading to electrical failures or safety risks. Instead, using clean, granular fill material ensures that the conductors are protected and that the surrounding soil can be compacted effectively, preventing future settling. Section 300.5, G, Raceway Seals. Conduits or raceways that may allow moisture to reach live components must be sealed or plugged at one or both ends. Additionally, spare or unused raceways should also be sealed. Sealants used must be compatible with the cable insulation, conductor insulation, bare conductors, shields, or other associated components. 
The accompanying photo shows an underground installation where cables are housed in ducts, with sealant applied at the building entry point. There is also a sealed spare raceway. Informational note. The presence of hazardous gases or vapors may also require the sealing of underground conduits or raceways that enter buildings. Section 300.5, H. Bushing. A bushing, or terminal fitting with an integrated bushed opening, must be used at the end of a conduit or other raceway that terminates underground, where conductors or cables transition to a direct burial installation. Alternatively, a seal that provides the same physical protection features as a bushing is also acceptable in place of a bushing. Key Considerations 1. Purpose of Bushings Bushings serve as protective fittings that help to prevent damage to conductors as they exit a conduit or raceway. They ensure that the edges of the opening are smooth and rounded, reducing the risk of abrasion or cuts to the conductor insulation. 2. Integrated Bushed Opening The term, integral bushed opening, refers to a design feature in which the bushing is manufactured as a single unit with a smooth, tapered opening. This design helps to guide the conductors safely out of the conduit while providing a secure and protective transition. 3. Use in underground installations. When conduits or raceways terminate underground, it is critical to use bushings to protect the conductors from potential physical damage caused by soil movement, settling, or other environmental factors. 4. Installation considerations. The materials used for bushings or seals should be compatible with the cables or conductors being installed to avoid chemical reactions or degradation over time. Going back to our question, can THHN be installed underground? The answer is no, however, most THHN wires are also rated as THWN, so it's important to ensure that the wire is marked with the appropriate slash type. Additionally, we discussed the rules for transitioning cables or conduits as they enter a building and emerge at grade level. Use appropriate connectors and fittings to achieve a watertight seal, protecting the conductors from moisture and physical damage. When installing wires underground, consider using conduits for added protection against physical hazards and environmental factors. Thank you for participating in this important discussion, and let's continue to prioritize safety in all our electrical projects.